Hello! So today I have another little Jackson's haul. Um, I'm gonna get everything out of the box and we will take a look. Alright, so this is of course more paints and I'm pretty sure most of them are gonna be Roman Schmal paints. Yep. Okay, so I do have a couple of dupes in here and I will tell you what they're for in a moment. But right now, let's have a look what we have. Okay, so I'm gonna put these over here and I'm just gonna grab each one. So this is the Iron Chrome Brown. This is the manganese violet. Then we have a perylene green deep, which I'm going to put over in this pile a transparent oxide brown tint a beautiful Payne's gray which goes in this pile a Vivianite Blue Ochre. Ooh, this one is a special one. So this is kind of a pricey one that I have hesitated buying, but they had a sale on these and I thought, what better time to get it than now? Cause ooh, why not? So I am excited about that one. I'm very interested to see what that's like. We have a Manganese Brown. A Cypress Burnt Umber Deep, a Potter's Pink, uh, Ocean Blue, and a Kaput Mochum. Oh, and one more, sorry. And this one is the tint. So these are paints that I don't have and these are paints that I do have, but I'm gonna save those for later. And I also got two other little paints. This one is a Davies Gray in the Rembrandt brand. Now Davies Gray is a real interesting color. It's almost like a green gray. So I've always wanted to try that and I have not tried any of the Rembrandt paints and people have been raving about them so I thought I would try that. Another little Rembrandt in it's this color, uh, Spinel Grey, and I believe this is kind of like a really deep dark cool toned grey.
let's take a look at all these swatches in a little more detail. So this first one is the manganese violet, which is PV16. And this one was way more vibrant than I thought it was going to be. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it's really beautiful. It's this super light sort of beautiful floral violet. And there is some granulation, which is really pretty. And you can see that even more in this gradient wash here. So when I do these top washes, it's wet on wet. So I'll fill in a circle of water and then I'll put the paint in because I like to see how it flows. And so that's what we were looking at previously when I was swatching these out. But uh, this one flows okay. It's not a super flowy paint, but I just love that granulation and it's just a really interesting color. I don't have anything in my collection like that. And this next one is Transparent Oxide Brown, so PR101. And this one's lovely. You can see there's, in the wet on wet here, there's definitely some different colors. So we've got a little bit of really dark brown, almost black in there, and then these lighter caramel tones here. Uh, the gradient wash doesn't show it as much, and it doesn't actually show much granulation. But, you know, sometimes to show granulation, you have to have a lot of water. So this wet on wet worked really nice. And this was super flowy. This one was beautiful. I love that color. So next one is Iron Chrome Brown, which is PBR29. And this one's a pretty flat one. There's not a ton of granulation in here. I really like how it kind of this effect up here where it was moving in the water. Uh, it was pretty flowy and it's just a nice sort of dark toned brown. There's not many other colors in there, maybe a little little darker tones, maybe some black, but it doesn't really separate out into a lot of different colors. It's just sort of a warm brown, deep brown. And then this is the manganese brown, so PY64. Let's just look at these two together so you can see the difference here. Uh, this one I find a little more interesting. It has a little more texture in it. It's really a lovely brown. And then we have the Kaput Mochum, which is PR102. And this one's gorgeous. This one flowed like crazy. And as you can see in the wet on wet, it broke out into a couple of different colors there. So we've got some really nice red burgundy tones and some browns and almost some blacks there. So it's not a super granulating color at all, but I love how it sort of breaks out. Even in this gradient wash, you can see some different colors in there. And then this is the neutral tint. So PV60 plus PVK7 plus PV19. And at first, when I was swatching this, I thought, wow, this is really similar to their Payne's Grey. So I grabbed the Payne's Grey swatch and nope, <laughs> this is a lot bluer um, than their neutral tint because their neutral tint is actually a, quite blue toned. And so it made me think that it was similar to the Payne's Grey, but it's not. As you can see, not even the same pigments in here. A little less flowy. This Payne's Grey is crazy flowy. Uh, this one, not as much, but still pretty cool. And it has a really nice gradient wash here. It's really lovely. So that's a really nice neutral tint. Ooh, and the Vivianite. So this doesn't have a pigment number. It's just the Vivianite Blue Ochre. And this one was really interesting. It has such beautiful granulation and it broke out into kind of like a little bit of a yellow greenish color as well as that blue colors so it's really lovely you can't see it as much in the gradient wash but in this wet on wet you can see that yellow sort of undertone on the whole swatch there and this one is the Davies Gray by Rembrandt which is PBK 11 and PBR 7 and this is that lovely sort of green toned gray here almost it's almost khaki like it kind of doesn't even feel like gray to me like when you compare it to other grays that I have <laughs> but it's a really interesting color it's not super saturated and it doesn't really break out into other colors there's a, you know, a little bit of granulation there which is interesting but yeah and then we have the spinel gray by Rembrandt which is the PBK 26 and this is a nice rich probably cool more cool toned gray it's a little bit flowy not so much no granulation really but I just love that gradient wash just fading to nothing and it's just such a deep tone and this just looks so beautiful I want to just do like a like a midnight <laughs> kind of painting with just that it's so lovely so yeah really nice rich gray 
So let's take a look at the brushes that I got in this haul. So this is the one that started it all. <laughs> and I know these are all the same brand, but the reason is because I love this guy. This is my 10-0 Icon Quill from Jackson's and I just love it. It's so lovely to work with. It holds a bunch of water. It holds its point here. Uh, it's just a really beautiful brush and I have found myself feeling like I wanted something a little bigger sometimes. So Jackson's had a brush sale and I thought this is a great opportunity to buy some more sizes. So I ended up getting the uh, three zero, the zero, the two, and the four. So these, these big boys here, I'm not sure <laughs> what I'm gonna use those for because they are quite a springy brush. So this might be interesting for big sort of shapes that you want some definition on them. So these are gonna be interesting. These guys I think are gonna be great just cause they're not much bigger than this, but it will give me a little more to work with. And they're just a beautiful brush. They're so smooth and this is like a really nice satin finish. The ferrule is really good. It's really tight on there. I haven't had any of the hairs fall out. Uh, yeah, and these are all synthetic. Really resilient, love it. Here's a, another couple of brushes that I got. So these ones are interesting. These are kind of specialty brushes. I didn't actually realize this one was gonna be so big, <laughs> but it is wonderful and it's super soft. So I just wanted it for sort of texture work and I just wanted to get some different marks. So this one is actually from the Silver Line, the Jackson Silver Line. And then this one is a Medium Pro Art Master Stroke Round Comb Rake. So what's going on with this is that some of the hairs here have been trimmed down. It's kind of like getting a haircut where they use those thinning scissors to sort of cut them down. And I was interested in using it for like foliage work and just some details. Again, I didn't realize this was so big. Um, I know I'm goofy. I, I, I just can't, can't do it with measurements. So <laughs> I may see if this one works for what I need or I might need a smaller one. But yeah, I think these are really interesting. This brush we have here is a large Ron Ranson hake brush. Uh, I have a little hake brush that I use all the time. I think it's a similar width to this, but unfortunately it is falling apart. So I decided to invest in a more quality version of a hake brush. The one I got was off AliExpress and it was just a couple of dollars. So I am not surprised that it's falling apart, but it is a kind of a bummer when you're doing washes and the little brush hairs are left behind. So I'm hoping this one will be a little better and I believe it's a little wider. So I'm excited to use that for some real gestural painting. So that should be fun and they hold a ton of water. It is another White Knights palette. I ended up getting another one because I want to make another palette. I have a bunch more watercolors that I want to be able to use in the studio mostly. So I think this is, this is the other one that I have and I did a video on choosing the colors for this palette. I think I may have changed up some of the colors since then. A lot of them are the same, but I did end up getting some new Schmincke colors that I wanted to put in here. And I think this gray is new. So I swapped some out. If you want me to do another video on that, I can update you on this. But this has been really helpful. But what I did do is remove this lower palette here. So you can see on this one here, actually this one doesn't even open very well. Normally they kind of lie a bit flatter than that. <laughs> so I just find when I'm in the studio, I don't need this extra space. And when I'm out and about, it's kind of just clumsy having this laying open, you know, on your lap or something. And I tend to just use this mixing space anyway. So I'll probably remove that. And all you have to do is just pull out this little metal rod in here and this thing just comes right off. So I'm going to do that, I think. And what I love about it is that it just fits so many paints. You can fit like 35 full pans in here or you can, you know, divvy it up with some half pans like I did with my other one. But yeah, it's just a really handy little palette. I mean, it's not super great quality. It's no Schmincke or Winsor Newton palette, 
but for my uses I find it great and it hasn't rusted or there's no sharp edges so um, yeah I really like it so the mystery why do I have these dupes well I decided that I had a little bit of affiliate credit and I thought I would buy some extra paints, ones that I loved, and do a little giveaway. So I will post a separate video on this with all the details. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to subscribe and it should be up soon. Okay, thanks for watching guys! Bye!